How many friends have you made today? Chapter 3. Insert chapter here. So, you used to be a monkey? Blue Blood asks Anon with a large grin. Anon gives a nod. In a way, yes. I find that very interesting. Celestia says as the three of them have a small picnic in the garden. So, let me guess. You want to know how Anon ended up having a picnic in the gardens with Blue Blood and Celestia? Well, I guess I have enough time to indulge you. I am rather tired, so how about we go back a few hours and watch the events happen? Really? Would you prefer that? Alright. The past will become present in three, two, one. Luna, what are you doing? Celestia screams at Luna as she tries to pry her off the Minotaur Ambassador. We will render thine head from thine shoulders, you cow! Luna yells as she tries to slash the Ambassador with her horn. Hmm, seems we went a little too far. Give me a second to calibrate this thing. Someone get this mare off me! The Ambassador screams in terror. To think, the Ambassador thought it was going to be the same old yearly meeting that he has with a princess. Meet her sister, she said. It'll be alright, she said. What he didn't expect was for Celestia's younger sister to gore him with her horn. Luckily, he was fast enough to grab her horn before it could plunge into his chest, but that didn't stop Luna from pulling away from his grasp and drawing again. Luckily for the Ambassador, Celestia managed to pry Luna off of him and teleport her from the throne room. To make sure that she wouldn't return, Celestia made sure to place a large C&D spell around the room. So, that should be enough to stop Luna. After a few moments, she could sense that her sister was no longer attempting to break in. Celestia couldn't believe that she actually forgot about the war. She scolds herself silently for not remembering the large crusade, led by none other than her own sister. She quickly sets her attention to the ambassador. I am so, so sorry for that. She comes in and tries to defuse the situation. Uh, oh, yes. Okay, I think I got the thing working again. All right, past, here we come. Celestia has a worried look on her face as she stands in front of Anon's door. He went to sleep last night after eating all that meat and hasn't woken up yet. It's around 5 in the morning now. She has never known any pony to sleep past 6, although to be fair, Celestia doesn't know much about human sleeping habits. She also assumes that every pony rises at the same time as her, so she doesn't really know much about sleeping patterns in general. She has a very sheltered life, to be honest. A familiar smile returns to her as she thinks about Anon. He's a great friend to have come to see her home. Despite his reserved nature, he always goes out of his way to make sure that she's comfortable when she comes to spend time with him, always making her smile and just allowing her to be a normal pony again. She felt obligated to return the favor, so that's why she ordered so much meat for his arrival. She knows that since his stay in Ponyville that he hasn't been getting too much nutrition to balance himself out. Celestia's been around for a long time and met with many ambassadors in her time. Meat eaters aren't a big concern to her, and as long as it's not one of her subjects being consumed, she couldn't really care less where the meat came from. Some ponies find it wrong to eat other creatures, but Celestia knows it is a necessity for some other races out there. Before Luna was banished, it was common to see a pony eat a piece of fish from time to time. Some ponies even took it further by eating small amounts of meat as well. It never harmed them, and many seemed to enjoy it. She's not exactly sure on the date of when it happens, but after she had a piece of bad fish at a restaurant, every pony seemed to think that all fish were poisonous. After spending a day or so in her room to recover, Celestia received a petition signed by the entire city of Canterlot to ban the consumption of animals in Equestria. This is one reason why she no longer goes out to restaurants. Ponies hang on every word that she says, and every action that she brings. She can say that she enjoyed a slice of cake from the most rundown building ever seen, and ponies would flock to have a slice. In smaller towns, she feels a bit of freedom, yet there are always dangers, such as reporters. While she does dislike them, she never says anything about it. Seeing as if she said she would rather have them beaten to death, chances are they would be. That is another reason why she likes being around Anon so much. She can speak like a normal pony, have opinions, likes, and dislikes, and Anon never took her word for law. In fact, he would actually disagree with many of the things that she liked, though he mostly did it to make her angry. Like the one time, he actually said that he didn't like cake. Every pony likes cake, even aliens from different worlds like cake. Celestia stops in thought as she thinks that over. Now that she thinks about it, Anon actually never ate cake in front of her. Instead, he would just give his slice to her. Perhaps he was telling the truth when he told her that he dislikes cake. 
Celestia is so lost in thought that she didn't even see the door to Anon's room open. Anon just stood there with surprise. He wasn't expecting to see Celestia here. He looks over to a clock in his room and finds that it's around 6 in the morning. How long has she been standing here? Now, what he finds disturbing is the thousand-yard stare that Celestia is giving. Anon waves his hand in front of her a few times to see if she would react. She just sits there looking him in the eyes, though he can tell that no one's home at the moment. He walks over to her side and brings his hand up to her ear, snapping his fingers a few times. She still doesn't break from that look. Anon's starting to get a little worried now, because he'd never seen her so lost in thought before. Lost in the beauty of a hoof-made cake, sure, but this is something else entirely. Celestia? He calls to her. She still doesn't acknowledge his presence. So? Still, nothing. Sally? Currently, Tia is in her mind looking over memories of Anon. Every time she ordered him a piece of cake, he would turn it down or just give it to her. She's pretty sure that she had never seen him eat a single slice of cake ever since they became friends. Tia! Celestia jumps in shock as something slaps her flank. On reflex, she throws her hind hoof back and smashes into something solid. She turns around and feels herself freeze up. Anon is lying there, on his back. Anon! She instantly runs to his side and brings him to her chest. Are you alright? What happened? He coughs a bit as he tries to bury away the pain inside of him. I... I, I think I got kicked by a horse. He lifts his shirt up a bit. A perfect hoof print is left as a bruise onto his stomach. Yep. Yeah. <coughs> yeah, definitely kicked by a horse. Celestia looks in shock as she pulls him tightly to her chest. I am so sorry. I didn't know that you were behind me. Ow, ow, easy, easy. Celestia winced and eases up a little. Anon rubs his stomach some as he looks up to Tia. She has tears in her eyes and is only moments from crying. Oh, no, don't look at me like that. It's my fault that this happened. Anon speaks in an even tone. You are zoned out and I try to get your attention. He chuckles dryly some. Smacking your flank while standing behind you. Yeah, that wasn't really one of my best ideas. Celestia looks over to her flank, and does find a red-looking hand mark there. She can't feel the sting at the moment, but she's far more concerned over Anon to care. Maybe we should take you to the infirmary? Celestia offers, and Anon shakes his head. No, no, I just need to walk it off, he says as he slowly gets up. Celestia is by his side as she helps him up. He keeps a single hand on the small part of her back to balance himself out better. Yeah, getting kicked by a horse, that hurts. Celestia finds her mind coming back to why she came here in the first place. That does remind me. I came by to check and see if you're okay. You did appear rather ill last night. Anon shifts some on his feet to gain better footing. Uh, I'm good. That rest really did do wonders. Celestia looks at Anon and finds him rubbing his stomach some. The small winces are as clear as day to her eyes. She feels one of her wings embrace him as she pulls him to her neck. Anon could do no more than rest his head on the back of Celestia's neck. He knows that she's trying to comfort him, yet he can tell that it's more for her benefit than his own. Even if he told her it wasn't her fault, she is going to blame herself. She's too caring for her own good. Celestia can feel Anon's heart beat slow as she holds him closer. She doesn't know quite why, but she likes to have him this close. She rarely gets to hold another like this. She's used to holding Twilight like this when she was a filly, but, well, those days are gone. She just assumes it's in her nature to take care of others. Do you want to join Glow and I in a picnic? Celestia asks, and he smiles at her. Sure. So, that's pretty much how we got to where we are now. As for how it got to monkey talk, well, Blue Blood was telling Anon how much he likes monkeys, and how Anon kind of reminded him of one. Well, when you know it, Anon admitted that his people used to be monkeys. Celestia never knew such a thing was possible until Anon explained how it all happened. How is it that your people... what was the word? Evolved? Celestia asks. Anon scratches the stubble that is starting to grow on his chin. Celestia finds it odd that Anon is largely hairless, and yet he grows patches of hair in random places. Eh, it's hard to explain, he admits. Change happens over time, and after a few million years, well, many things are unrecognizable. Celestia gives a nod. She understands the point that he's trying to make. Having only been around for a few thousand years, Celestia knows from experience that time does indeed have a large influence on the world. Celestia giggles some as a small monkey starts to climb onto Anon. 
I'm still unsure how your little friend there can one day become someone like you. She admits, and Anon shrugs. I'm no scientist, so I can't really explain it in total detail. Everything is peaceful right now. Just another day of relaxing for them. Blue Blood is walking around the garden, petting some of the animals, while Anon and Celestia just relax under a local tree. It's one of those moments that you seldom see in the life of royalty. Anon couldn't help but look over to Celestia as she looks out towards the garden. That look of tranquility. It's a good day, isn't it? Celestia asked randomly. Anon hadn't even noticed when Celestia turned to face him. He looks out to the garden and nods. Definitely. Celestia was going to reply, but notices a guard approach them. Princess, we have a visitor. He speaks in a firm tone. Who might it be? She asks. One of the elements. Celestia feels her brow raise. It couldn't have been Twilight. She usually sends a week's notice before arriving. Oh, you ever think about telling her which element? Anon speaks in a sarcastic tone. Because, you know, she isn't psychic. He then looks to her. You aren't, right? Celestia shakes her head. Thought so. The guard seems to realize his mistake as he gives a bow. Oh, terribly sorry. It's the elements of generosity. Celestia thinks over to why she would be here. Perhaps she's visiting Fancy Pants and wishes for a place to stay? Celestia hears Anon let out a long groan. Ugh, I can't stand that woman. Meh. Celestia corrects. Potato. Doesn't matter. The fact is that she's on my list. List? He shakes his head. Not like that. Like, uh, an enemy's list. Enemy? He nods. I do not think I have such a list. I will admit that Luna and I do dislike Discord, so does that count? Anon lets out a sigh. No, not really. An enemy list is basically a list of people that have wronged you, so you then get revenge by any means necessary. Anon reaches into his back pocket and pulls out a small black book. So who's on the list? Celestia asks curiously. Let's see... Anon flips open his book. Twilight, Applejack, Rarity, Rainbow Dash... He pulls out a small pencil and starts to write. Pinkie Pie... He then sets his pencil down. There's also Fluttershy, Cheerly, Mr. Cake, the Cake Twins... Fools, really? Celestia giggles at such a ridiculous thing. He nods. They gave me a look. I didn't much care for it. He then flips a page. Derpy, as well as most of the fillies and colts. Can you tell me why they deserve to get onto this list of yours? Celestia asks with a grin. She couldn't believe Anon had something like this on his person. Anon flips back to the first page. Twilight for experimenting on me. That doesn't- Celestia tries to defend her students, but is cut off by Anon. Against my will. Yeah, talk about awkward. Oh. Celestia has a feeling that she might need to talk to Twilight about boundaries. Anon looks back to his list. Applejack for bucking me when I told her that apples aren't that great. Celestia will admit that isn't really a good reason to harm another creature, however she knows how headstrong that mare can be. She takes after her grandfather more than she probably will ever know. Rarity for being herself. That one seems a little unfair. Rainbow Dash for her pranks. Celestia can understand that one. Luna likes to prank her a lot, and she doesn't take any joy in such an activity. Pinky for that rock that she hit me with. If only she had the time to grab her with her magic. She was honestly curious as to why that pony would assault Anon in such a way. Fluttershy for not helping me with my protein needs. She can understand why Fluttershy wouldn't do such a thing. She probably thinks the act of another creature eating another to be aberrant. Cheerily for thinking I was a full napper. Celestia was going to ask about that one, but found it leaving her mind as she hears the last pony on the list. And Mr. Cake for thinking I was hitting on his wife. How did that come to pass? Celestia asks, and Anon looks to her. How was I supposed to know that complimenting a pony's smile was considered flirting? Well, let's start with our teeth. Our teeth change as we age, and if you say a pony has a nice smile, then that is telling her that she is young looking and takes care of herself. Celestia informs him. Really? She nods. Huh. He then shakes his head. Anyways, I told you about the twins already. Derpy got on the list when she tackled me to the ground for a muffin. And as for the fillies and colts, when I went to see Cheerilee for the first time, they all thought it would be fun to dogpile on me. Which led to why Cheerilee thought I was a full napper. I was trying to stuff them in that sack to get them off of me. 
Celestia looks to Anon with a blank look. A sack. Anon waves it off. Eh, it doesn't matter. The fact is that they're my enemies now. Oh, and what will you do with them? She asks while rolling her eyes. He shrugs. Eh, not sure. Thinking about poisoning them. Her playful attitude drops instantly. You weren't serious, right? He looks to her with no emotion. Of course not. Why would I ever do anything like that? He then grins at her and pats her on the shoulder some. Just joking. I'm probably just gonna ruin their careers. Not too sure about the young ones yet, though. Celestia isn't really too sure on how to respond to that. Thankfully, the guard thought that standing in place waiting for the conversation to return to his predicaments wasn't very likely. So, he decided to speak up. Oh, Anon, so classically violent. Anyway, let's get on to our classical donators. Top donators, Dash of Evergreen, Peter Coltard, J Tin Man, Darkseid, and Ponyman. Courier Cruciae, Strix, Delta Omega, Runescythe9852, Dospo, Rhiny Dragonwolf, Hunter Norman, Austin Rowland, Secret Moon, Tal Rasha, The Toilet Snake, Sword Brother and Mordred, Cerberus, Goulash Eating Hazar, Ron and Wandering, Ender I-63, Starlight Glimmer, Squiddy Boy, David D. Sanchez, Soul Dragon, Gaggy, Trey, Shadow Drake, Joe Piercy, Alex F, Rainbow Dash, Teal'c Anderson, TV Killer, John Becker, Leon Reynolds, Raven Speedster, Zach Raquel, Mr. ECU, and Leslie Prigott. Thank you all very much for watching this video, and live life to the fullest.